Helene's on her way. She's pretty close. She's supposed to be hitting in a couple hours. I got the entire cockpit emptied and then brought inside, which has been fun. Everything's either tied or put away. So Hurricane Helene passed by last night. It was windy, but not, yeah, not, yeah, not, not too bad. Uh, so we're just gonna go back, check on the boat, and see how it fared. And, uh, so first stop, we're gonna check on Scott's boat here at Praia. And then after that, we're gonna head over to Angra and see how Wisdom fared on the herd. Hurricane Helene has come and gone, and we made it through fine. The boat is currently covered in a thick layer of salt from the spray, because we're right next to the breakwater. So the waves were hitting, and it was coming up. Uh, I spent the hurricane at Scott's house. It's good to make it through just fine. So a quick recap. The Durads didn't work. The last project of why I came here to the Azores right now is to start taking apart this bulkhead to see if I can get the rot repaired. So I have to take the air conditioner out and everything out. We got the bottom of the bulkhead opened up because that's where the rod is. So we're gonna sound it with this metal rod. So all you're doing is tapping and depending on the sound you can tell is the wood rotten, is it good, is it completely hollow in there. For example, metal like that. Good wood. And then rotten wood. All right, so this section here, that bottom little hole is the rot. We already figured out the rot inside the closet is very minimal. And I started excavating the rot that's outside. And that's a bit more extensive. So this entire soul bearer is just rotten and, and gone away. And then the plywood subflooring in here, this is just spongy and just rotten. Now, worst case scenario, I can just replace this one board in mahogany or something like that, which here is pretty common. And the boat is made out of uh, white oak and mahogany, so it'd blend in quite nicely with the uh, cabinetry. Right now I'm just cleaning out all this rotten wood, and if you're wondering how you can tell if it's rotten, this was a big beam of wood, and it's just coming out like mulch. So, all of this is just rotten wood that's just broken down. So I've cleared out the rot that comes out easily by hand with either just grabbing it and pulling because it's that soft, or a blade screwdriver and kind of scraping at it. So let's take a look at all these giant holes we have to fill now. So one is here, and you might be wondering, what are you looking at, everything looks fine? The truth is, there used to be a beam that ran from here, all the way across into the closet. That beam completely rotted away. Here's a little bit of it that was left, and it's just completely gone. There was some wood in here, which I've cleared out, but as you can see, it was quite the hole. The entire floor is gone. If I put my foot underneath, oh, there's my toes. Over here you can see the bracket where the uh, beam that rotted away completely used to attach. So this is uh, Douglas fir, and then this is marine plywood, and this gap is where it has completely rotted away. So that all looks really horrible, but in reality it's not that bad. The Douglas fir beam next to the marine plywood, that one's actually important, so that's structural. The giant 2x4 that rotted away that was Douglas fir, that's actually called a soul bearer. So its purpose is actually just to hold up the hatches that go down on the floor. They're not actually structural. So the structural component there is that giant iron rib behind the piece of wood that rotted away. Thankfully, all the rot seems to have been in uh, kind of the, the comfort pieces of the boat. So they're the ones that, you know, bring the bulkhead out to here or around this edge off or give you something to attach the trim to, not so much the structural wood. So the structural wood of the bulkhead is totally sound and I am very happy about that because that was a huge concern. And then uh, the soul bear is just rotted away. The, the section where that piece of marine plywood rotted away, we're now going to take the drill and it's just like doing a filling on a person, on a tooth you have what they call infected wood and affected wood. And teeth, they call it infected dentin and affected dentin, but that's, that's teeth. So infected wood is the one that has the actual mold and rot in it. 
affected wood is next to it. So it's soft, but it's not actually rotting yet. So what I'm going to do is I just take a drill, just like on a tooth, and I'm just going to drill it out until we're just down to sound solid wood. If it's a small hole, we're just going to fill it with resin. If it's a big hole, we're going to uh, spile in some wood and scarf in a repair. While I was in there cleaning up the, the rotten wood, I also noticed that our chain plates have some uh, rust on them. So the chain plates in our boat are a little different from most boats. Most boats have the chain plate comes down and bolts directly to the hull or to the bulkhead or something like that. In our case, the chain plate comes in and actually bolts to a giant iron rib. So it's really strong because it's iron, but it's iron in a saltwater environment. So it's been fine, but it's gotten so much salt on it lately that uh, from the chain plates leaking, which are now sealed, that it started rusting. So I got some uh, Portuguese version of Rust-Oleum. So the instruction said to let this stuff sit on here for six hours, and then after six hours to paint it quickly. This rust converter material works pretty well. And you can see the chain plate now looks like metal and not like a ball of rust. So now at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint them with an exterior paint for metal. That way it seals it in because rust occurs because oxygen gets on the iron and forms a compound called iron oxide. If you inhibit the ingress of oxygen, it can't turn to rust because there's no oxygen so no chemical reaction occurs. Technically, rust is actually the equivalent of burning. Like when wood catches on fire and turns to ash, it's the same chemical process that make rust happen. It, it oxidizes. If you just cover the metal in paint, it doesn't get any oxygen and it doesn't turn to rust. We got all the rust off so we're going to put new paint on. And hopefully that'll last another 50 years. No, it was a past durant a semana. Ah! We're back at the airport and I'm flying back to the States today. So it's going to be the long, long haul. Good morning, Good morning. 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 I'm letting it stay open to air out and dry out. Yeah, that's pretty much about all I really got done. So the boat is being fared, and they're gonna start spraying primer and then spraying the topside paint. Now it's time for the drive back to Baltimore. So we're here in Ocean City for the Chesapeake Dental Conference. Yep. I'm a dentist. And I'm the spouse. And Captain Lee, as you've been asking, where is Sammy? Sammy is in a cage. Since we are here in Baltimore for another week and a half, we get to go to the Annapolis Boat Show. So we're with a rigging doctor right now, but he's not only a rigging doctor, he's also a tooth doctor. He's gonna pull my tooth out! <laughs> so Aubrey, which one? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, we'll do that. The top one? Yeah. Right. Can we put it? Can you see it? it? It's under the gums, but it'll pop right out. <laughs> this is two grilled cheese sandwiches with a hamburger in between. Otherwise known as the gut buster. Wait, well, you do your <laughs> circumnavigation, like, how was it on a cat? It was great. I mean, I grew up on monoholds, so yeah. that's all I ever knew. 
and I was a little hesitant, but oh man, I, honestly, I would never do anything but a kid. I'm ashamed to say, but <laughs> no, it's it's brilliant. If I'd had to do it again, I'd absolutely do it on a cat. See, I could live on this. Oh my God. What are your thoughts? It's bigger than the bathroom I grew up with. <laughs> All of this is kind of this cheapy wood, like it's uh, veneer. It's plastic. This one hall has three cabinets. I love these. Yeah. It's tiny, but somehow this feels so much more spacious than ours. And all the modern boats, they're all super sleek and all the sharp edges inside. So like here, everything is nice and rounded. So if you bump into it while you're at sea, it's nice and round. It's not going to cut you or gouge you or something like that. Unlike the catamaran we were just in, which was clearly not made for cruising because the edges were just sharp and everywhere. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Gosh. Well, this is beautiful. Talk about rounded edges. Yeah. See, this is how it's supposed to be. We're here with our friends Ben and Kate who have a daler and live on it here in Annapolis. So we're going to check out this one right here. And yay. This is nice. This cover? looks okay. This looks like an airplane. It does kind of look like an airplane. <laughs> I'm judging a little bit. <laughs> yeah, those are weird. Yeah. Right? So this door is double as the bathroom door and the shower door. Look at that. Yeah. Ben style boat. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't want I don't want doors, I don't want cabinets, no. I don't need a headliner. <laughs> this is a Ben boat. Yeah. Oh, I don't want any of it. He's like, I don't is, want any of that not stuff. A no. no. You got the two two Look at that two burner stove. I'm not cooking yeah, anything in the oven. No. Nope. This is a Ben boat yeah, for I sure. Don't, I don't like this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing like you could stand up straight there. That's Can you? Right? Can you? You can. <laughs> I think I can. So at sea, you got nice bolts. <laughs> yeah, but he bends like, oh, you can have access to them, so it's great. Hi. <laughs> this is definitely the master suite. Oh, there's a low ceiling there with a sharp edge. <laughs> Why would they do that? This part is low and it is very sharp and it hurts my head. <laughs> the Dogfish Head, which is located in uh, Milton, Delaware, people know us for our beer, but we also have been making spirits for about 15 years, and um, we make an amazing rum. We think it's amazing. It's called Barrel Honey Rum. Ooh. It starts with molasses. We make it from scratch, distill it and age it in new charred American oak barrels, and then put a little bit of honey from Delaware, from upstate Delaware. And it's a fantastic sipping rum. Did you say you like whiskey? Yeah, this yeah. is like a great, this is like American whiskey because we age it like an American whiskey in new charred oak barrels. And um, you'll, this could could, ease, could quite possibly be the first dogfish head rum in Portugal. Woo! Yeah. All right. We're able to so accept if you that can, challenge. If you can challenge yourself <laughs> not to open until you get there. Yeah. Then it'll mean something. Or you Sweet. can open it now. <laughs> Just not we'll, until you get home. We'll yeah. get, we'll do it uh, in Portugal. Yeah. We had a really, really wonderful couple months uh, back in Baltimore, but we are so ready to get back to our home in the Azores. Um, we're really excited. We're here in the airport in Boston, and we are ready to face the challenge that we'll be making the boat livable again once we get there. It feels surreal to be going back I have missed wisdom so much. It's gonna be feel it's gonna be good to be home. We just landed. 
We're really tired. We are gray, <laughs> but don't worry, it's not gonna stay this way. I am so confused. My theory is that we ate lunch for six hours. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.